Welcome to Travelpreneur. I'm your host, Megan McSwain. Today, we're speaking with Murray Decker, Chief Executive Officer of Tour Amigo, a true industry expert with 10 plus years of experience in the biz. Tour Amigo is a booking and reservation software designed specifically for multi-day tour agents and operators. Hello, Murray. Thanks for joining us today. Hello. Hello again. Thank you very much for having me. You're coming to us from Australia. From Australia, yes. Nice. Uh, Brisbane, Queensland. Nice. Well, welcome. So Thank let's you. talk about Tour Amigo and, and your journey. What inspired you to venture into the world of travel technology? <laughs> um, well, I was actually working um, overseas. So I worked as a tour guide for some of the biggest uh, names in the industry. So that's uh, your bus abouts, your travel corporations. I worked for G Adventures and I started off as a tour guide because uh, I was living and working in London. Quickly went into operations and started being exposed to the systems or the lack thereof that they had in the back end. So we were operating off Excel spreadsheets. In those days, we were faxing things. I think we wow. still are sometimes <laughs> nowadays. And uh, yeah, so that was sort of my first exposure. But the original idea was to just have a friendly spot that people could find information on all these companies. Um, but as we progressed, we realized that the reason why a lot of this information wasn't online is that these operators didn't have any sort of proper back end booking and reservation operational sort of enterprise resource planning systems. So you were sort of seeing those struggles from tour providers back then? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I experienced it myself. And I even started up my own sort of tour operator business as well and experienced all the spreadsheets and um, everything that you were doing offline and the static information. So, um, yeah, have experienced it firsthand. So how does this platform, Tour Amigo, how does it digitize and distribute these tours and how does it benefit both operators and distribution agents? Yeah, so we're the only sort of B2B and end-to-end -end solution out there. So we can provide tour operators, DMCs, destination management companies, or even ocean and river cruising companies, um, a full back-end system that powers their entire business. So we solve all the efficiencies operationally, booking and reservation, passenger management, finance, accounting, accounts payable, receivable, all on the back end. And once they're in our system and building those itineraries, we also provide them with a two-way or bookable API or live connection into whoever they want. So this is where we go into the distribution side of things, uh, where we have 100 plus different travel agencies around the world and online travel agencies. Pretty much anyone who wants to sell these tour products, we can provide them with one link and that gives them access to over half a million different tours. Wow. So Tour Amigo has an interesting three-tiered pricing structure. And first, can you tell us how you developed that structure and why it works? Yeah, it's been an evolving process because particularly coming out of COVID, no one wanted to pay any sort of upfront monthly fees. So it had to be a transactional percentage fee. But now we've, we've moved very much into more of the, the software sort of space. So we've now got monthly fees based on the number of users. So subscription um, licenses that they would be using the system and then a flat fee of a transaction fee to scale with them, just mainly for um, if they're going from 1,000 bookings to 100,000 bookings, then uh, we can scale with them in terms of servers and functionalities and support. So yeah, we've simplified that model along the way. In answer to that question, it's been an evolving process because when you're in sort of a very innovative space, there's no sort of benchmarks and compare it to other industries. But we've really hit a nice sweet spot now and it's really um, good for both us and also our tour operators and clients. And so just because I know that all business owners have anxiety about if their services or experiences are appropriately priced, how do you develop your prices, if you can share that, in terms of did you do competitive research? Uh, did you get client feedback or, or how, did you, how did you do it? All of the above. Um, and we started off with market research and what other industries have been doing and what functionalities and features they offer. And then we have done about a year to year and a half of beta testing and uh, mixing up of different models. We're actually quite flexible. So like sometimes some operators and clients much prefer set fees and will pay a higher set fee so they know that this is the fixed fee that's coming in and others prefer a more variable, you know, a combination of a fixed fee and uh, or a lower fixed fee and a, a variable 
booking fee so that they can that that's the model that they choose because they can potentially pass on that sort of expense within their packages um, to the to the retail or to the customer um, so yeah so that's where we've actually logically done it. it's been through beta testing and through our customers to make sure that it fits with their businesses right and because we cover both small to medium and large enterprise customers, it's a model that we found now works very, very well across the board because it's the same and very similar technology being provided. Maybe it needs a little bit more support in different areas, but um, it's the technology that we are charging for. You mentioned COVID earlier. When did you launch Tour Amigo? How long has it been around? Yeah, during COVID. <laughs> you start- <laughs> uh, was when we, yeah, That's when ambitious. We through, so, so, no, well, look, it actually... It was a catalyst for our industry to realize that they can't be reliant on one source of selling partners um, and revenue streams. And right. so they were looking to diversify where their products could be featured, where their products could be sold. So it was actually a catalyst and, and a bit of a turning point where industry is starting to look more at technology. But at the same time, we when we launched, it was officially basically November last year would be the, the official live launch, but we had... We were operating for six months before that with um, customers that were going through. They were helping us improve the system, looking at different ways that we can add features and functionalities in, etc. Well, aside from sort of coming off this weird time from 2020, these last few years, what other challenges have you faced with kind of building this brand? Um, I suppose one of the, the biggest challenges has been like we've done this pretty much on our own with it like we we haven't sourced outside sort of funding um it's been just locally based where we are from brisbane funding's been very difficult it's been a bit of a challenge when you're in a space that doesn't have the data because it's so fragmented so how can you show um and that's where some of the investors do struggle uh, with a lot of that information so it has been that's been interesting but it's been a bit of a turning point now because of the traction and the revenue growth that we've had just over the last sort of six to seven months um that's changed a lot of those conversations because it's sort of like we we can prove the data ourselves but that's sort of been the main like in terms of growth um, hurdle. Our clients have been amazing. Team's been incredible. Is there any feedback or testimonials that you've received from tour operators that can highlight the positive impact of Tour Amigo? Is there a testimonial you can share with us? Yeah, so we've actually got a few. Um, I think we've just put them up on on the website as well. But I think the one thing that our, all of our customers are coming back with and what, um, okay, another one of the challenges in the industry is that technology companies are renowned for probably underestimating the cost and overestimating the delivery. So right. it's a battle, you know, when we come in and say, look, we're going to deliver on time, we're going to deliver within budget, uh, which we've done on a consistent basis. And that's what our customers come back and say, is that um, what we say we're going to do, we do, which is very different to some of the experiences that have been had in technology across the board, not even just in the travel sort of space. So sometimes we miss opportunities because we're very realistic with it, but they come back to us because um, six months down the path, they find out that, you know, what was actually realistic and whatnot. So that's where we really pride ourselves and and what our customers have come back, that we are quite transparent with the the timeframes, the, the pricing and uh, what they will be receiving. It's never sort of an overpromise. I feel like that's sort of good advice that you would give to anybody starting a business. I was going to ask you what your, what advice you would give to a travel entrepreneur who's someone who wants to get into this industry. And I feel like that's, that's great advice right there. Be realistic about it, about the expectations. Yeah, it it is, but it's frustrating because we've missed out on tenders with some uh, really large companies because it's on a points-based system. So if you say yes to every question, you get through, right. but if you're yeah. realistic in there, you don't score as highly, so you don't get the seat at the table. <laughs> like eventually, you do, but like that's sort of the sacrifices we've had to make, and we know eventually it might be years that they will come back because we know we're at the forefront of this technology and functionality and features, and we're releasing functionalities on a weekly basis. So it's we're leaps and bounds ahead of what's in the market at the moment in terms of a SaaS system. And so that's where we pride ourselves on that, but it's been incredibly frustrating. Sure, so it's good yeah. advice, but be ready to take some hits for uh, being um, transparent and, <laughs> and realistic. This episode is brought to you by travelpayments.com. Travel businesses have unique needs when it comes to credit card processing. 
from large average ticket sizes and tolerance for higher chargeback ratios to simple integrations with the most popular shopping cart systems, the travel industry specialists at travelpayments.com have you covered. Unfortunately, many of the most popular credit card processors initially accept travel businesses, but without warning, freeze their merchant accounts and the thousands of dollars in them because these service providers don't understand or support the unique needs of travel industry business. Don't get stuck with one of the big guys who will freeze you out without a moment's notice. Instead, work with the travel industry specialist who will support your business every step of the way. Visit travelpayments.com to get a free quote today. So in your opinion, how important is the adoption of technology in the travel industry and what insights can you share with travelpreneurs about leveraging technology to gain a competitive edge? Yeah, well, I mean, look at any industry. The ones that don't adopt technology generally have been left behind. I would say not to forget your roots. Like I know there's channels that have worked in the past and still keep you know, powering on those sort of uh, different selling channels and methods. But when there's tools and um, processes out there, it would be silly not to utilize them, Uh, whether it's us or anyone else. You know, it's not, I'm not doing a plug just for us. It's just like that this is where, you know, that where people, you just got to follow your clients. Where are they actually going? Where are they viewing? Where are they doing their research? You know, and how do you get in front of them? I think the biggest challenge for some of the clients that we work with or not our clients but some when we're prospecting and doing sales is that you need to evaluate not just on what the technology can do on a distribution side of things but how much time is it going to save your people and i think that's something that we don't measure too much in the travel space like how much time it takes to process a booking or set up the costings for something so if that can save a particular person or three people 50% of their time, imagine what else they could be concentrating on to grow your business. Mm -hmm. And that's where the ROI is and the cost, where they can balance out the costs um, with it because it is an additional expense on the books, but the cost and the benefits uh, in the long term is far greater for them. Is there a specific software or program or provider that you use in the business that you would recommend to other travel businesses or business owners? Oh, yeah, we use heaps. Like in terms of development, we use a system called Shortcut, which is sort of our project development that everything's there, but it's very clear and understand for both developers and sales and uh, implementation um, people as well. Mm -hmm. Like you don't have to have a development background with it. We use Pipedrive as our CRM, keeps it clean and simple. It's more of a sales CRM, it's not a services CRM or an account management CRM. And yeah, we use PandaDocs for all their documentation. That saves a heap of time. So that's like your online e-signing sort of documents as well. Uh, so yeah, we use multiple. What well, we're we're not just preaching and using Excel Excel spreadsheets right. ourselves. If someone brings in an Excel spreadsheet, we're like, hang on a second, we're we're being contradictory <laughs> here. <laughs> right, um, right. So so we engage. Um, we have all our accounting software um, in Zero, which is quite popular in Australia here. So yeah, it's a, we use a multitude of different technologies to help our business and yeah. You're in the game. You're totally in 2023, as they say. Exactly, exactly. So what are the opportunities that you see on the horizon for Tour Amigo? What kind of, what does the future hold? We've just launched um, cruise, so river and ocean cruising, and we've already right. had a couple of customers uh, start using our SaaS. Um, we um, have many destination management companies, DMCs or DMOs, sometimes you might call them, that we're signing up at the moment as well. So they've been terrific because we can introduce them to some of our tour operators. Um, we also have our travel agents. So we're sort of creating that um network between them, um, which has been really successful. We're finding that uh, we're dealing with quite a few online travel agencies that we're about to announce partnerships with who have a multitude of DMCs and tour operators seeking technology. But going into the future, uh, we're coming out with sort of some global payment solutions for both receiving money for these operators, but also paying all their suppliers. This is where they don't really have too many options for paying their suppliers that are in market at the moment. Everyone focuses on receiving the money, which is obviously the important part, but you've also got to pay your suppliers. And they could be across multiple currencies, multiple um, countries, et cetera. And we've got a huge amount of features being released as well. So B2B agent portals, B2C or customer portals, logins, and even a complete sort of 
functionality for them to review their businesses and reviews for customers. So there's some very exciting things on the, the horizon that just comes out as part of our offering uh, with it. But uh, yeah, where we see, we really want to help the overall industry and these types of um, clients that I've just mentioned to collaborate together, to uh, interact together as well. So is that like your hope for Tour Amigo in the long run, like what you see kind of big picture, just how the platform contributes to the overall advancement of the travel industry? That's correct. Yeah. So, and we're already starting to see it. It's a, we get a big reward out of that. And, you know, just it's it's really quite rewarding when you're talking to customers that when we say anything you're doing in an Excel spreadsheet can now go into our system. And that sometimes almost brings tears <laughs> to some of these eyes, you know, like they're, <laughs> particularly if they're in operations, they're like, you mean I don't have to work an Excel spreadsheet anymore? And it's like, that's where we, we get a lot of reward out of um, really helping out sort of from your small to medium to large enterprise um, customers because because the benefits are relevant to the size of their business as well. It can be so hard, right, to leave those things in the past because they're familiar and comfortable, even though they drive us crazy. But once you leave yeah. them behind, there's just like a whole new world, an exactly. easier and an easier world. We make it a smooth transition. So we're like, you can keep doing your Excel spreadsheets for, you know, the crossover of two or three months while you're using the system just to double check, you know, like because right. you have to really gain trust and that it's going to be uh, system, working sure. exactly Correct. Mm -hmm. So, um, but that's something that we really involved in that onboarding process. We do all training. There's all help centers within the system implementation processes. So that's where we, we can sort of say, okay, now you can let go of that spreadsheet if you'd like, if you want to keep it going in the back end, because you're going to do it anyway. So if you right. want to keep it going, then no problems. But um, that's where it's uh, been a big help. And I think um, from a distribution perspective, like our network of travel agencies and online travel agencies, helping them just with one connection uh, that they can access not only just your big sellers, but all the unique operators that might be DMCs and tour operators that we are onboarding and are unique to, to Tour Amigo, uh, we can supply them as a unique differentiation. And so these travel agencies can connect in and have a B2B agent portal and have access to all of these different products just through one link. The alternative is they have to individually connect into them one by one. So it saves them a huge amount of time on that respect. Well, that sounds very cool. I mean, it, in such a short time, it really sounds like you guys have created something that's going to be very time saving for a lot of people, a huge benefit, clearly. Tour Amigo is undoubtedly reshaping the B2B travel technology space and making a positive impact. So we appreciate you sharing your journey and, and the journey of this of this company with us. And we'd love to catch up again in the future and kind of see where it's at and get an update from you. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, yeah, we, we have many announcements sort of coming up. So stay tuned with it. And uh, if anyone wants to reach out to us, we're, we definitely take a more consultative approach. We're not going to give you a, a sales pitch. It's like if we believe that our system's not suited to the people that we're talking to, we'll be very upfront and honest. But we have enough connections where uh, whether it's our um, competitors in market or a different industry, we'll recommend them on if we think it's a better fit. And how can people get in touch with you and follow along to what uh, Tour Amigo is up to? Share your website and, and contact info. Yep. Very active on LinkedIn. Our website has all the, the contact information, um, partnerships at touramigo.com. You can contact us directly there, but easily go through the website. Follow us on LinkedIn because we make all the announcements um, through the LinkedIn page there. And um, you can contact just through LinkedIn if you really need to. Any way that they want to contact us, they can. Um, there's numbers on the, the webpage as well and happy to help if we can. Great. Thank you so much, Murray. It was wonderful getting all of this insight from you and we look forward to speaking with you again here on Travelpreneur. Fabulous. Thank you very much for having me.